Hey everybody, Hoosier Jedi here with another review for you, this time talking the Doctor Who episode, Sleep No More. And uh, boy is that title a little ironic, because, well, I feel slightly unqualified to uh, review this episode, because I dozed off during it. Uh, long story short, Saturday I had uh, to get up at like 5.30 in the morning, and... Uh, it was a pretty long day for various reasons. So by the time I got home, uh, like about an hour and a half before Doctor Who came on, I was pretty whooped. And uh, I think I, I think I dozed off at like the 40 minute mark. And I was out for like 20 minutes and then I wake up literally just as I hear the little music and the, the credits start popping up and we see the preview for the next episode. And I was so tired, I'm like, ah, just whatever, and basically uh, <laughs> rolled right back onto, rolled right, basically rolled over and went back to sleep on my couch back there. I was that tired, and I didn't even, and I didn't even watch the uh, broadcast of it, the rebroadcast a couple hours later, uh, just because again I was so tired, and also because like up until that point, the episode had felt fairly lackluster. I mean, it wasn't bad on... We just felt very like a rehash of a things we've seen a million times before. I mean, how many times have we seen the episode, you know, scientists are mucking around with something they shouldn't and, up oh, there's a monster. Well, we've seen that a million times. We've seen that a million times on Doctor Who. You know, this is just seemed like at first, like the typical base under siege episode in a lot of ways. Again, something we've seen a hundred times on Doctor Who. I mean, it was certainly well done, and the episode was atmospheric. Um, we had Chopra, the 4-2, whatever the hell, and Deep Aunt Ando. Um, I mean, they did take time to give those characters, you know, a little bit of personality, some degree of backstory, before they offed them. I mean, they did make it feel like they could be characters that we might see again, or at least reasonably well sketched out one-shot characters. I mean, they certainly weren't Sally Sparrow or anything like that, but good enough. Um, oh yeah, well, Nagata, she did live. Um, and, um, you know, I mean, that, that that stuff was all well and good. But, I mean, I'm watching the early parts of this episode, and they st the, the scientist guy starts going on about the whole thing of like, okay, you know, here's what I did. I got rid of sleep, and I'm like, oh, God, they're going to call the monsters Sandman, aren't they? Like, oh, man, I bet somehow they work in a reference to that old Mr. Sandman song, because, like, old songs from the 50s have kind of been on my mind lately, because Fallout 4. Oh, Fallout 4, Fallout 4, Fallout 4. But anyway... And, of course, they do all those things, and I'm like, oh, God, really? Really? So, I mean, all of that really kind of added up to me not being super bothered by dozing off and missing the end of the episode. It wasn't until I got up the next morning and started uh, doing a little bit of reading about what other people had to say. I'm like, oh, there is... Uh, apparently, I missed quite the twist at the end. Now, I do like how they um, sort of riff on those stupid found footage horror movies where it's always like, why the hell is anybody recording this? And here they offer a perfectly good explanation. It's it's the monsters that are recording this, not not the people. And that's part of the, the monster's agenda is to record all this and have people watch it. I mean, that twist at the end, when I read it, I was like, wow, okay, now I'm disappointed that I dozed off. And with Clara being, you know, un being infected by this whole situation, well, this kind of feels like something that'll probably factor into how Jenna Coleman leaves the show. Uh, hopefully, things will work out for her a little bit better than they did for Donna. And, um, yeah, let's see, what else? Uh, oh, yeah. The whole thing with um, getting rid of sleep, right? And they basically say it's like, all right, you can get rid of sleep, and now you can spend more time working. Well, why the hell does anybody want to spend that time working? I mean, why doesn't like people can't say like you can spend that more? That's more time for you to go snowboarding or something like that. I mean, granted, it's all corporate sponsored or whatever the heck, but still, I mean, really, would 
people want to spend an extra eight hours a day working? I mean, there's only so much time our brains can spend on something like that before, you know, our body demanding sleep or not. We're just going to have to turn away and occupy our thoughts with something else. I mean, that, that, that's just the way the human mind works. We can't indefinitely stay focused on one task. That's why, you know, you have to take a break. That's why you have to sometimes step away from whatever it is you're working on and go do something else for a while just to give your brain a chance to recharge. And sleep doesn't really have anything to do with that. So, yeah. I mean, never mind how horribly, horribly cliché the name Morpheus is. I mean, sometimes, sometimes you yeah, just kind of have to let shows have things like that. And... Yeah, I mean, it was definitely a t really twist ending. I mean, the Doctor doesn't even really fully understand what's going on. And it wouldn't surprise me if this kind of comes back to, to haunt, uh, haunt the Doctor in, some, in the remainder of the series. I mean, you'd think that, hey, if these sleep monsters were going to go out there and destroy humanity, that would have kind of been the thing in, recorded in history and the Doctor would be aware of it. Also, I do like how the Doctor does take to, the time to properly explain what, you know, sleep is you know that in our eyes he, he is correct it's mostly just like skin cells and stuff uh skin cells and like salt from our tear ducts our tears i should say at least that's what i remember from when i was in school and uh that actually jives one time when i was uh when i was in high school we were messing around with microscopes and i happened to rub my eye and like a little piece of sleep kind of came out on my finger and like well let's we'll stick this under the microscope and see what it looks like and it looked, uh, if I remember, oddly crystalline. Uh, but anyway, yeah, that's pretty much all I really have to say about this episode. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I literally slept through a third of this episode. So um, anyway, guys, that's all I have for you this time around. As always, please comment, rate, and subscribe. And of course, you can follow me on Twitter at Hoosier Jedi. Until next time, take care and have a good one.